first man, O.J. Anderson, rushed for 193 yards last week. Second highest total ever for a rookie in his first game. His college teammate, Ken Johnson, led the Giants in receiving, catching six. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Ford Motor Company, building tomorrow's cars today. And by Sperry, we understand how important it is to listen. Welcome to Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the home of the New York Giants who play host to the St. Louis Cardinals. Both teams last week losing their opening games. I'm Gary Bender along with Tom Brookshire. Tom, the big question about the Giants is, which team are they, the first or second half of last week? Well, the awful problem is that Pasarczyk has to keep getting up and being tough because he has no tackles at all. Uh, he doesn't have uh, uh, Gravel back yet, so he'll have uh, Coppins, who's well-known around the league, uh, released by L.A. earlier. He's got uh, Michael Ochik, who will be out, and Neville, uh, Neville will be in at right tackle. He's going to have to really... Uh, try to get by with really a patched up offensive lineup and this is the home opener it's tough boy Tom last week OJ Anderson he was sensational can he expect to have as much success today I think you have to watch the second back anytime you have a guy with 193 the Giants might shut off OJ and a guy like Wayne Morris can have a big day himself but I don't think the Cardinals lost they lost by a point to Dallas but I think that was probably the biggest impetus game uh, losing game that I've ever seen for an opener St. Louis looked very tough all right the officials in charge of this game today Chuck Heberling, along with his very capable group, as the Cardinals feel if they entertain any serious thoughts of all about making the playoffs, they must win today. The Giants, the last two years, have really been a thorn in the Cardinals' side here in Giants Stadium, as you look at Joe Pasarczyk, defeating the Cardinals both times last year, shutting out the Cardinals 17 to nothing. Pasarczyk, a real tough quarterback. He was sacked seven times last week actually, against Philadelphia. Actually nine, and they called two of them off. And now getting ready to kick off will be Steve Little for the Cardinals. As the Giants have won the toss, they have elected to receive. Tony Green is back deep for the Giants. And Green is going to let it bounce around. Emery Moorhead's going to pick it up. And Emery Moorhead brings it out to the 20, 22-yard line. And so the Giants will set it up there. Again, Bill Austin, the offensive line coach for the Giants, uh, got into town just in time to find out last week this is his offensive line. Van Horn, by the way, at left guard, is not feeling good with a bad leg. He may not play very long either. Clack is class at center. JT Turner learning at right guard. And Neville, of course, used to be with the Denver Broncos. There's Perkins, who had two touchdown catches last week against Philadelphia. Dixon had the only catch for the tight ends. Sargent had 20 of 40 last week. Coder and Ken Johnson, he's the 11th round rookie. That was picked up by the Giants, a real surprise. Coder comes in motion for Sarchik, a flag on the play. He completes it to Johnson, and Johnson's all the way out to the 34-yard line for a first down. But as we mentioned, a flag was thrown just about the time that play got underway. Remember, Pasarczyk threw 40 times, completing 20 a year ago, and they're going to catch St. Louis off sides on the first play. Johnson caught six passes last week in the loser against Philadelphia. A simple flare out of the backfield. Boy, that's easy. Pasarchi gets one for one coming right out of the blocks. Good call Upside. against the 34 defense, defense too. Number 82, refuse. 82, First Bob time. Pollard, the left side defensive end. You know, Johnson, they didn't hear a lot about him. He played in the shadow of O.J. Anderson. He might be the find of the year. Yeah, but the Giants cannot run outside with tackles that are questionable. That's going to be a big problem. First down now from the 34. Pasarchi again going to the air. And Jimmy Robinson, the intended receiver, very good coverage that time by Carl Allen. Let's set it now defensively. There's the forward wall. Pollard, a good pass rusher. Davis playing no, had nine tackles last week, and Dawson is trimmed down to 250 from 280. He's a good one. And back in the linebacking court, Tim Carney had a good game last week. Yep, he had 12, even on 12 tackles. And the secondary, a secondary that was tested last week by Roger Staubach, has Carl Allen back. He suffered a concussion a week ago. I still think they're a secondary man short of two for an NFC title team. Second and 10 now from the 34. Wasarczyk, play action fake, good fake. This is over the middle, Ernest Gray, the rookie out of Memphis State. He's the guy who dropped a couple of passes last week, but they have great, great hopes for him. I like the way Gray runs the pattern. 
Here, of course, is the young draft choice. Watch this good play by Pisarchik. He can overthrow the ball once in a while, but this one he really lays in there. Remember that Gray, when in college, set an NCAA record at 30 yards average per catch. That lasted quite a while. That's going to last quite a while. 18-yard pickup on the play. First down at the Cardinal, 47-yard line. Pisarchik last week started slowly, but in that second half he was brilliant, and now he's called for timeout. The Giants have asked for a timeout as we have 13.57 remaining in this first quarter. The initial series of the game will return to the Meadowlands in just a moment. Sorry. I said we are not interested in that proposal. <sighs> the meeting is next Thursday, Bill. 16 long terms on September. Fredericks, are you listening to me? Uh, if there's one thing you should remember about this deal... Not knowing how to listen has cost American business billions of dollars. Well, as one of the world's major corporations, we at Sperry are doing something about it. We've set up extensive listening programs that Sperry employees worldwide can take part in. And when you do business with Sperry Univac or any of our other divisions, you're going to discover that Sperry listens like no one you've ever done business with. 80,000! I said 8,000! No, no! Sperry, we understand how important it is to listen. Well, that's who's coming out throwing, huh? Good idea. Joe Pisarchik, Tom Brookshire, wasting no time putting this ball up, is well, it? Well, when you don't have a rushing game and you're not going to fool anybody with it, you might as well air it out and throw it 60 times. Maybe he will today. First down from the 47-yard line of St. Louis. In motion comes Gray out of Memphis State. Doug Coder, and Coder has always been effective against the Cardinals inside the 45 to the 44. Last year, he had 118 yards rushing in a game against St. Louis. Yeah, and I've seen him catch 11 balls on the given afternoon against the Cardinals, too. He is a tough inside runner. But make no mistake, he can't get outside. And if you can't uh, throw the ball or get outside against that 34, it can be a very long afternoon. Carney missed the tackle, by the way. There's the sideline, and already Eric Williams has been shaken up in this game. He's one of the inside linebackers, maybe their best linebacker. Is Allerman in there for him? Allerman has come in. Second down, six from the 43, and wait a minute, we're gonna have to have another football. Evidently, Jim Clack didn't like that one. Maybe it's an off track. I didn't think it was raining or snowing yet. And well, defensive backs, they don't notice the difference anyway, do they? Boy, those centers do, though, don't they? Second and six from the 43. The blitz is on, he got rid of it. Boy, a blitz by Ken Green coming up the middle. The intended receiver was Gray. He was lucky to get that one off. Watch the left cornerback, 27, Allen, come from the lower part of the screen, too. Right on through. Ball is on target. Roughly handled. I think that is uh, Allen that's making the tackle. Good tackle, and that's the one area that I think uh, Wilkinson's forces are worried about, the left corner a little bit, huh? That's the reason they sent Green up there in a hurry. Pasarchi now two of four for 31 yards. Third and six from the 43. Sarchik with a flag on the play. Intended again for Gray, and you saw almost the same result as the play before as Carl Allen over there, and that Allen's playing pretty tough. Yeah, that's two good contact jobs. Let's see this near the line of scrimmage. Pollard thinks he was being held by the offensive right tackle. Nope. The illegal procedure, Giants. Now that will bring up a fourth down, so they're going to refuse that penalty. What does that signal mean? That it might mean that you're jumping off sides early and holding. Don't try to interpret that one, huh? Willard Harrell will go back for this punt as the Cardinals will obviously refuse Illegal it. Illegal formation, number 74. Refuse, holding, 74. Refuse, fourth down. That's Tom Neville, who they just picked up from Denver. He may be still learning the system for the Giants. He might have lined up in the backfield trying to get a deep position. Good drop. Dave Jennings will kick. He's averaged 43.5. He's got to throw it. Far side, Johnny Perkins. Perkins to the 25. Perkins to the 20. He's still on his feet. He may go. Inside the 10-yard line of Johnny Perkins, who's had an injury problem, didn't start the game, 
But he came in and made a remarkable catch and run. But this is exactly what uh, the new coach has put into the Giants. Perkins last week threw on first and goal to go from the one against Philadelphia intercepted. But Jennings throws to Perkins who had two touchdowns a week ago. It looks like from the second half on that the Giants are sort of a new team right now. That was a 27 yard gain and you know Perkins had a bad ankle but you couldn't see it on that run could you? Good fake by Jennings too. So they're going to set the ball just outside the 15 yard line and wait a minute we've got another timeout call. Cardinals have asked for the timeout so they use one as Kurt Allerman comes over the near side to talk things over and with 12 42 left to be played in this first quarter the Giants are looking very very impressive. It's official. Ford's answer to rebates, the largest incentives ever available to its dealers. The biggest clearance offer in Ford history just got bigger. See your Ford dealer and discover how many hundreds of dollars you can save on new trimmer LTDs, Mustang pace car replicas, elegant Thunderbirds, top V8 pickups, vans, Broncos, Rancheros. Compare the total Ford deal with any other. You may well find it's the best value overall. It's my best motor oil, Sunoco Special. Heck, you can take this 10W40 grade, do a lot of hard driving, and it'll stay a 40 grade. Now that's an oil you can count on. I can be very friendly, yes I can. Catch you with kindness, that's my plan. Give you every courtesy, that's what friendly is to me. I can be very friendly, very friendly. Yes I can. New this fall, catch California Fever, when every day is sun and fun, and every night is something else. Jimmy McNichol and Mark McClure star in California Fever. Well, Coach Ray Perkins came over from San Diego, Tom Brookshire, and he said, I'm going to open things up, and he's done exactly that. Okay, it really hurt your defensive team to have St. Louis have the fake punt thrown on him. Sergeant's in good shape right now. We come to the... 16-yard line with a first down for the Giants. Masarczyk, a blitz by Green, has intended, and an interference call coming up against Carl Allen. That's three times they've gone to Gray against Allen. Good play by Allen, though. The taller receiver, 6'2", has a little bit of a reach advantage on him. And again, you're only giving up a first down in five yards by trying to make the great play. Pretty solo effort here, and not badly done on defense you got to take the chances you think maybe the scouting report was to pick on Allen a little bit in this game they're really Pass coming after him. defense number 27 first time you don't have a few of those as a defensive back you're not playing at all there's the giant bench as far the Giants picking up where they left off last week when they came back and scared the Dickens out of Philadelphia 48 seconds to go they still had a chance to win the game first down from the nine yard line. Sargent to Gary Shirk, the big tight end, and he is about a yard short of the touchdown. Ken Green coming over to make the stop for St. Louis. I like the way Pisarczyk threw that when he threw it early. Sometimes Joe gets the ball glued to his hand and has to stand to rush. Look at this. Sets it up after three steps, hits the tight end on the outside. Boy, good effort by number 87. Shirk gives you about everything he's got. Pretty good pass protection. I see Neville working on Pollard and doing the job. Not bad execution. Shirk's had some good games against the Cardinals. At 77, he caught a 64-yard pass. Operating now from the one-yard line, second and goal. Masarczyk to Kim Johnson. And Johnson did not get in. Johnson will be short, and it'll bring up a third and goal. On the line of scrimmage, let's take a look at it. We only show this because it really is a game of inches, even when it's down that close and with that much uh, meat on the hoof occupying all the territory. There's Perkins. He looks like he's lost about 20 pounds. Ray, huh? You think he didn't catch some passes from some great quarterbacks? Name it. Stabler, Unitas. Here we go. You can see how close it is to getting in on third down. Up the middle, and Coder is rammed backwards. What an effort that time by the forward wall of St. Louis. Carney, Tim Carney, really stuck him right on the thigh guard. Watch number 56, right in the center of your screen. Hello, that'll get your attention, even if you're from Kentucky. And now the Giants have asked for their second timeout. 
They've called timeout on a fourth and goal at about the half yard line. Masarchik goes over to talk to Ray Perkins. The well, Giants would like to maybe go for the touchdown. They better. They're going to argue about it. 30 years ago, on a hot summer's day, your father taught you how to dig for clams. Now that it's a job, the sun seems hotter and the day longer. But the clams taste just as sweet. And now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, if you've got the time, we've got the beer, Miller Beer. Ever since American Airlines flew the first passenger jet across this country, we've been bringing people closer together. And now, with the Super Saver fares we pioneered, you can save 40 or 50 percent all over American's America. From Albany to Albuquerque, from Nashville to Knoxville, from sea to shining sea. Well, there's the story. Less oh. than a yard to go, but that's a long ways in this all situation. Or nothing at all. What do you go for it? An okay. easy three points with Danello, or do you try to get seven? I think they'll go for the seven, don't you? They sure are. You better believe it. Versace's got him lined up. Big play early in this game. Versace giving off to Coder. He's in. Touchdown. Doug Coder takes it in. And for the Giants with a gamble early, it pays off. I'll tell you, Ray Perkins does have guts. It's a gutsy call for the freshman head coach here at the Giants, and I like it, and I think the people do too. And your offensive lineman will eat it up with a spoon. They love it. Let's go in and get the touchdown. Black got a good block, and Coder only makes it by the hair of his chinny-chin-chin. Chin. That's all you need to do. Joe Danello to attempt the point after. Randy Dean will hold for the Giants. 11.35 remaining in this first quarter. This is the initial series of the game. And Danello adds the point after. So the Giants have jumped on top. 7 to nothing. The Giants moving the football. A team that last week found their offense in the second half. And they have continued it. Radio Shack has slashed the price on one of our top-of-the-line stereo systems. Right now, save $310 on this impressive realistic hi-fi. You get this quality AM-FM stereo receiver, a pair of realistic tower speakers, and this precision belt drive turntable, all for only $579. A great entertainment bargain and a beautiful addition to your home. The sale-priced realistic stereo system, just $579, only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. This baby's been from Maine to Malibu, but I don't let her go nowhere without the treatment. This is no car. This is a legend. And you better believe I give her the treatment. STP oil treatment. Since 1964, over half a billion cans have been sold. No other brand even comes close. So do what millions do. Give your car the treatment from STP. This sweetheart gets a treat. And this sweetheart gets the treatment. Following the game, CBS Sports presents live coverage of the finals of the U.S. Open Tennis Championships. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Well, Tom, we've got an all-New York final in the men's finals today. Yeah, we got Captain Travert and Patrick Summerall are burning, watching this set right now, watching this game before the finals, huh? The Giants with a 7-0 lead. Joe Danello got into that one very well. This is Willard Harrell returning it for St. Louis. And Harrell is going to make it to the 20, and that's all. Good reaction that time. Otis McKinney, second-year man from Colorado, made this tackle. All right, straight-ahead football. Came from the bench after the conversation, the conference with Pasarczyk and Ray Perkins. And as we said, for a little split receiver who played five years with Baltimore, it looks to me like Perkins is going to be a very optimistic head coach and it'll be fun to watch. They have the good defense. They get that offense going. They're going to cause some problems. With the 20 yard line, the Cardinals first offensive play. Jim Hart giving off to Wayne Morris. And Morris for a yard and that's all to the 21. Gary Jeter hit him. Jeter, the third year man from USC. Let's set now the Cardinal offense. What a fine offense. Other line. than Pittsburgh, I think this is the best offensive line as a unit perhaps in all of football. Extremely big, strong, 
And that time, Wortman was whipped by Jeter. That's a surprise. Wortman did a good job against Harvey Martin last week. Dave Steve going to play some Mel Gray, who has a hamstring problem. Pantilli can play with anybody. There is the back field at number 32. Watch him, Otis Anderson. Second down, nine. This is Anderson. Anderson draws a crowd as he gets about a yard. Mike McCoy, along with Gary Jeter, as you look at the giant bench, this is Alan Caldwell, number 45, a free agent out of North Carolina coming in. That's Coach Hawkins that used to be with the Redskins sending him in, and you're looking at a great quarterback who was a pretty fair free agent back in 1966. Is that true? That's right. They met in a hotel and decided, I think, to give him all of $100 and signed with a ball club. Now he owns the hotel, right? <laughs> I'll check and see. Third down, eight. That's Al Chandler. He'll jump out of that Y formation backfield into the tight end quite frequently. Back to throw, Hart. Tilly oh. intercepted. Picked off on the far side by Ernie Jones, and Jones is up and running, and Jones is going to take it in. Ooh. Ernie Jones with the interception, the return for a touchdown, and it's 13 to nothing. Big Ernie at 6'3", 180 pounds. He can turn sideways, and you can't spot him sometimes. Hart under throws, and watch this play by number 31. Hello there, touchdown. First interception of the year for the Giants. You're right, Ernie Jones is happiness, right? My heavens. 31-yard return for Jones, who last year had three interceptions. And now Danello is just there a moment ago, is back to add another point after. And he gets it. And the Giants have shocked the Cardinals in the early going with only five minutes gone. It's the Giants with a 14 to nothing lead. Watch the Giants hustle now. Watch number 24 come over. That's Terry Jackson and get the block. And the crowd reaction, it's a lot like a, a folk festival right now here at the Meadowlands, right? Everybody seems to be up, including the crowd. Well, the Giants are off and moving. And they're a football team that, well, I tell you, I'm impressed with them. Here's John Mendenhall, who last week had a one and a half sacks against the Eagles. He is super, super quick. He's only been in for three plays. That's not a bad way to play defense. So, Danello, who's been a busy guy, will be kicking off again. Danello, by the way, kicked a 55-yard field goal in the preseason, which is the longest of his career. As back goes Willard Harrell, along with Roy Green, the rookie, out of Henderson State. You don't think the Cardinals aren't reeling a little bit right now. Yeah, that's a long game, but they better get some offense going. 14 to nothing our score with 10 minutes to go. First quarter. Last year, the Giants shut out the Cardinals here. 17 to nothing in a what they call the ice game. It's about five above zero that day. The weather today, just perfect. Fidello, good kick. Green. And he's not going to bring it up. This place is rocking right now with excitement as the Giants with a 14 and nothing lead. The Cardinals now on the 20 yard line, their second opportunity with the football. Hart last week suffered two interceptions. He's thrown three already this year. It's like a love tennis match, right? Advantage Giants. I saw earlier where New Orleans scored three points in their game with Green Bay. Did you see who kicked that field goal? Was that Galbraith? Tony Galbraith. As we found out early on the NFL today that Russell Erksleben was out with injury. Galbraith, boy, he does everything for him. From the 20-yard line, the Cardinals. This is Otis Anderson, and Anderson for five. He breaks it out to the 30, to the 35-yard line, and that is what we saw last week against Dallas. He ran over two officials in the process. Remember, he weighs 216 pounds. He'll get you about a 4-4-5. Four, four, Watch this move. Good block by Big Bob Young. Watch 64 come down now and pick up at 280 and start looking to run over people. Well, I'll tell you, number 32 can do it, but he is going to be a marked man. He's going to be gang tackled a lot. 15 yard pickup, first down to the 35 yard line. This is Wayne Morris, the other half of that running backfield, and he picks up five yards to the 40 yard line. Let's set now defensively the Giants. Trying to fill the shoes of 
Troy Archer is Phil Tabor, the young rookie out of Oklahoma. Well, you're not going to fill the, uh, the shoes of, of Archer, the late great Colorado player, but they play pretty aggressively the second half against the Eagles. Linebackers are extremely good. The secondary sometimes doesn't tackle well, but they've looked impressive so far. One interception for a touchdown thus far. Second and five from the 40. Hart on a delay to Anderson. And the ball, well, he's still got it. He's coming outside for the first down. That was the most unbelievable play. He was up the middle, and all of a sudden, he went outside. He disappeared from view, and he picked up the first down. Giants think they got the ball. Jackson having a fight with number 32. That might be a way to slow down a real thoroughbred, make him fumble early. Watch this move. Inside, locked up. Well played by Mendenhall. Look at this. Very few backs can start all over and come to the outside. Otis sure can. You know, there's been very few backs that have had two 100-yard rushing days in their first two outings. He already has 23 yards on three carries. From the 47-yard line, first down, 7th, 53 to go, first quarter. If you just joined us, the Giants have jumped on top, 14 to nothing. A little mix up. Give to Wayne Morris. Morris to the midfield stripe, but as we mentioned, a flag into the air. Brad Van Pelt. And there's that field goal we were talking about by Tony Galbert. What was that, 25-yarder? That guy can do it all. What did he do? Catch 74 passes last year, good running back, and now he kicks the field goal. I wonder where Erksleben got hurt. 23 yards of the official distance on Galbert. <laughs> this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Giants and the National Football League is prohibited. They called encroachment. Illegal procedure. Number 17 offense. Ball start. That's First Jim down. Hart. Move the hands, huh? Well, it's going to be first and 15 now for the Cardinals from their 42-yard line. He badly underthrew that interception pass, though. Steve and Tilly are split out at the top of the screen as you see them. Hart giving off to Anderson. Anderson to the 45, gains three of those back. John Mendenhall making the stop. An eighth-year man from Grambling, who in 74 was all NFC. He really likes the over position when he moves on to the center's nose. Even from the four-man defensive line, the teams can move into that position where Mendenhall is on the offensive center's nose. Washington, who lost that lead last week against Houston, jumped on top. And this one early against Detroit, who's played with Jeff Pomlo, man out of Delaware. Second down, 12. Play action by Hart. Hart cranking up. Pat Tilly's down there. The ball is thrown up for grabs. Terry Jackson defending on a play, and Jim just didn't get that one where he wanted it. And Jim Hart hurt his hand. A real good pass rush by Martin. George Martin came at the left defensive end spot. And I'll tell you, Jim Hart is sort of fooling with that right finger. Watch this. The draw fake did very little to stop the rush. Look at Martin. In fact, I think Deardorff was holding it. Looks like he ran into Mike McCoy with his hand. He's going to stay in the game. As Harry Carson now comes out, Alan Caldwell comes in. They get that nickel defense in there on a third and 12. There's Joe uh, Pasarczyk warming up. By the way, about Jim Hart, he is a very quick drop back man, but he is not a nifty guy in the pocket. He is not a very agile quarterback. And he's had some pressure in the early going. On a third and 12. Look out, Mendenhall, he gets loose. Wayne Morris, the intended receiver. But Mendenhall was back there, and right now, that offensive line of the Cardinals has their hands full. And this is a patched-up offensive line. Let's watch it. There's a game on the left side. Martin goes inside, Mendenhall outside. And I'll tell you, Hart did a lot just to get rid of that one. That's three straight times, Tom. He's had to step up in the pocket of, to avoid a sack. And so now Steve Little will come in and kick for St. Louis. Tony Green goes back. Boy, Green really hurt this St. Louis team last year. He returned a kickoff 99 yards for a touchdown when he was wearing the colors of Washington. Little kick, a beauty. Fair catch is called for by Green, and he'll be inside his own 15-yard line. Why did he fair catch it? Got me. He had 30 yards to run with it. If you're paying a guy money, you don't pay him a money to fair catch it. 43-yard kick that time by Steve Little, and, of course, no return. Hey, how about this fight coming up? 
on the CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern. The termites got a real problem. Howard Davis, uh, one of the very quick, fast Olympic gold medalists that we remembered, and of course, he's been on CBS a lot. And the Italian Grand Prix will have the highlights televised, and Jody Schechter is going to try to increase his lead in that world championship driving. From Monza in Monza. Italy, one of my favorite countries. I won't ask why. Like the food. From the 13-yard line on a first down, up the middle. Very little developed on that play for Ken Johnson. Johnson last week led this team in rushing as well as receiving. As you look at a guy who may be as tough as anybody physically at that position, Joe Pisarchi. You know, it's funny because for a big brute like he is, he likes music, fishing, you know, playing the oboe, those things like that. And yet on a Sunday afternoon, he's one of the toughest quarterbacks. Uh, if not the daintiest that you'll ever see. He's a big, tough guy. Well, he Six is four. Fit. 220 pounds. A gain of one. Second and nine from the 14. And here comes Ron Yankowski, number 78. Now, was he drawn up? Flags all over. It's going to go against New York. Tom Neville, the right side tackle, a veteran who's playing in his 14th year move. And remember, Neville just showed up off the waiver sheets before Bill Austin, the offensive line coach, showed up. Uh, he might be a little bit rusty to come up to the line of scrimmage and face a... Ball start, number 74, right. up end, right second down. 78. 74 just dropped back a little early. Well, he and the other tackle, Gus Coppins, they've only been with this club the most two weeks. Coppins was picked up from Los Angeles on waivers, so both those guys are really just getting acclimated. Got to throw the football, and it is a very dangerous place to start winging it around. Second and 14. Sargent's going to do just that. And he's got a man wide open in gray. Ernest Gray out to the 20. That's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. I wonder if Perkins worked with Gray on his patterns. He had a tendency to run his own patterns for a while. This is a very good control pattern. Watch this. He all sort of hooks up and waits so he doesn't run into the coverage on the off side of the field. I'll tell you, Ernie Gray looks like he's doing a good job. Sarchik now four of seven in this game. The blitz didn't get there at all from that 34 defense, and Joe got it off. Good throw. Well, the Cardinals last week had only one sack against Dallas. They have not rushed all that well. Third down and three. This is Gray in motion again. Four, four, 40 yard man. Here comes Coder going for the first down. Did he get it? He needed three yards. And he's going to be very close if he didn't get it. Doug Coder, a guy who each year they hope will get beaten out at that running back spot, but he always seems to be around when they start the game. Well, I noticed that uh, number 70 is in there now playing the nose, and I wondered if Davis has been hurt. Well, that's Keith Simons you're right. talking about. There's Simons coming out. And he's only Davis in there on the short yardage, huh? Well, they've tried this year, the Cardinals have, to play alternate people in all three of those down positions. They feel they're very equal. So that's what they're doing. They're alternating Davis and Simons at the nose tackle. You can see it was a first down by Coder. Masarchi. Protection is excellent. This is Robinson. Ken Stone over there. Also Roger Worley. But again, give that giant offensive line some credit. They protected him very well. Buffalo, 3-0, leading Cincinnati. It's a day of field goals. Boy, last week was a big field goal day for Dallas and St. Louis. Pittsburgh leading Houston 7 to nothing. That's uh, Sidney Thornton scoring for uh, from one yard out for the Steelers. New England after losing that tough one on a Monday night, leading the Jets 14 nothing. The Jets, of course, losing in overtime the first week to Cleveland. Masarchik on a second and ten. A little pressure. Tries to set up the screen. Ken Johnson's got it. But he didn't have any place to go. Everybody was around Ken Johnson. I don't think they fooled too many people on that one. Tell you, for a team that speed up, the Giants are sort of mugging St. Louis physically. Watch this set up. And all the St. Louis linebackers smell it from the very onset. And yet they have trouble handling it. Carney misses the tackle. Stay inside. Johnson doesn't get in any kind of a hurry to get himself into trouble. And they pick up yardage on it. I'm impressed with the giant foolish attitude. Here's Carney now moving over into it. Just missed the tackle, that's all. Third and seven for the Giants. On the 26-yard line. 
intended on the far side for Robinson, but good pressure that time. Masarchik is dumped, and he had to get rid of it. Dawson and Suk were back there, and so that will bring up a kicking situation. It's one of the few times Masarchik has been pressured that much. As Jennings now will go back and kick. I think he'll kick. Now, he is two for two. He did complete a pass last year for a minus two yards, but the one today was very effective for a broadcaster football player type. 27-yard pass completion that set up that first touchdown on the fake punt. Will he pass it or run with it, or will he punt it? Well, he doesn't have the field position now. He's going to kick, and he kicked it very well. Willard Harrell is back inside the 35, and Harrell is going to get a little room back as he moves it up to the 38-yard line. For the Cardinals down 14 to nothing, we'll have it. A 41-yard kick that time by Jennings, who was in the Pro Bowl last year and a man who holds most of the kicking records, hunting records for New York. They look ahead to this tonight. What a lineup on CBS, 60 minutes, all in the family and one day at a time. Archie and Edith Bunker keep the comedy coming, all in the family. And Bonnie Franklin in one day at a time. That's right, you're looking good here on CBS. That's all tonight, right here. First down for the 35 yard line, Anderson carrying it for two yards. Ryan Kelly making the tackle, and now Detroit trailing 7-3 in that game. Feisman, nine-yard touchdown pass in that game to Ricky Thompson. Well, you know, the old home field advantage is really obvious today. The Giants in their own ballpark are really laying the lumps on the Cardinals so far. You know, Tom, you always hear that about the Giants. They hate to play, and they beat you up physically. They no exceptions. I got an eight. Little option play to Wayne Morris. Morris gets to the 40-yard line, and you don't see that very often. Jim Hart on a little option pitch to Morris. Ray Rhodes and Brian Kelly combine on the tackle for the Giants, and it's still going to be five yards to go for the first down on third down. But good tackling by the Giants secondary. The, some of the game last week against Philadelphia, there was some sloppy tackling. Not so on that play. They closed in on the option play that you mentioned and got the other back away from Otis Anderson. Did a good job. There's nothing, nothing. Boy, what a standoff that's been. Chicago last week allowing only a field goal against Green Bay. Their defense is playing super. Here's Hart, back to throw. Gary Jeter's got it. And there is that new rule where they will not roughly handle the quarterback. If you're in control and in the grasp of the defender, they blow the whistle. Well, Hart, Hart loves the rule anyway because he's not going to run like a Bradshaw or Staubach anyway. Look, though, at Jeter as he makes the big rush, simply beats Wartman. And then holds him up and plays it straight. They had four sacks of Jaworski last week. Uh, Giants are playing pretty solid defense. And now the penalty is going to go against New York. Maybe he didn't, maybe he held him too harshly. Let's listen. Offside, defense, first time. Well, that's a break for the Cardinals. They had a third and five. Instead of having to kick the ball, they have a first down now at the 45. George Martin is the man that was offside, the left side defensive end for the Giants. Good way to get a pass rush. <laughs> Steve, Pat Tilly, the wide receivers. The Cardinals again playing without Mel Gray, who has 10 touchdown catches against the Giants in his career. Hart to Otis Anderson. Anderson Ooh. looked like he had some running room. He still gets five yards, but you can see that one developing as George Martin made the tackle. It's a good thing Martin got back into the hole because 32 was heading for the far sidelines. And we know what he can do once he gets into the secondary. You know, you go down line up for the extra point with number 32, believe me. Watch the left part of your screen. Pretty good play by Mendenhall, seals it off. Look at this. If Martin doesn't make that thing, we may have a relay down the right sidelines. That's the Dallas Cowboys. They can tell you about that. Second and five from the midfield stripe. This is Anderson again, and Anderson this time for a yard, and that's all to the 49, Brad Van Pelt. Some people will say he might be the best linebacker in football. Playing that left side, he has been in three consecutive Pro Bowls and all NFC the last three years. Third down now, four yards to go. See, Carson comes out, or he was going to come out, and Caldwell come in, but they changed it. Carson stays in and Caldwell retreats to the far sideline. Big play for Jim Hart and St. Louis right now. They've got to get a first down. 1.08 left to go in the first quarter. The Giants with a 14 to nothing lead. 
And it all happened in the first five minutes. Hard over the middle, complete to Wayne Morris. He had the first down and then gave ground, but I believe his forward progress will give them the first down. I don't think he should have it. He started running again, trying to get yardage and gave up the first down. I don't believe the first down should be awarded. Well, he tried to go for bigger things, and as you mentioned, it looked like, well, anyway, the officials say he's got the first down inside the 45, and as you mentioned, that's a big play for St. Louis. Yeah, it was a good pass. I just don't think he had the first down. You look at that forward wall, Bob Young, who Brookshire knows very well from the world's strongest man. Here's Hart to Anderson. Anderson bounces around, and for all his effort, he may have gotten a half yard. Ball is flown dead. Again, Ernie Jones thinking he has another football, but nothing doing. Brad Van Pelt making the stop. Well, boy, you give Anderson anything, and he'll use it. Tell you, he's beginning to do a lot of dancing around, though. And Too much. And that's going to be the end of our first quarter of play here on this beautiful day from Giants Stadium. It's been a very impressive first 15 minutes for New York as they lead it 14 to nothing. If we could take you through the plant to show you what is new and let you see what's going on and watch the things we do. If you could see the cars and trucks we're working on for you, you'd say incredible, Ford, that's incredible. If you knew how much money we're spending every day, go factories and people to help us find the way. If you could see tomorrow, the way it looks to us today, you'd say Introducing the incredible Ford Factory Tour. Come and see the things we're doing to rethink, redesign, reshape the automobile. Incredible things to produce a new generation of more fuel-efficient cars and trucks. If you could see tomorrow. How'd you like the tour? Incredible! incredible. Ford, that's incredible. To take the incredible Ford Factory Tour, write us for information. We start the second quarter of play here at Giant Stadium with Tom Brookshire. I'm Gary Bender. And from the 45-yard line, the Cardinals have the football. The Cardinals had 45 yards rushing, only three yards passing in the first half. First down. Chandler jumping in to that tight end spot. Tilly steep. The wide receivers. Hart wants to throw on first down. Complete to Anderson. Anderson. To the 40, inside the 40, to the 35-yard line. Did you see him pull that ball back for Ooh. Brian Kelly? He is something to watch. Well, I said earlier he's going for the grand slam on every play, but you don't want to tell a young great back not to do that either. Watch the move he makes. Watch number 32 from the tail back in the eye. And Jim Hart gets it to him very carefully, firmly. Now watch this move. Outside, don't believe that. Van Pelt gets handled. He reaches out and draws it back. Hart now two of five. That's the first pass they've thrown to Anderson, his first catch of the year. You're going to see more of that. Up the 36-yard line. Second down, a yard to go, and picking up the first down. The man who just checked in, Theotis Brown, he's their second-round draft pick out of UCLA, and they like him. He's a low 228. Another year, he will be probably giving Wayne Morris a lot, of, a big battle for that fullback spot. The Vikings leading the Chicago Bears 7-0. Two-yard run on that play by Kramer. Quarterback who had four touchdown passes last week. Boy, he is really doing a job for Minnesota. From the 33, first down for St. Louis. There's 
hard on the play action going to Dave Steep and Steep I think he'd been out of bounds if he'd have caught that ball defending on the play was Ernie Jones Steep is the guy <laughs> who last year had seven catches for 99 yards against the Giants here in the stadium Jim Hart almost got him killed <laughs> he really hung him up on that sidelines and the Giants secondary is banging everybody that happens to be in a white and red uniform very aggressive defensive play against them right now we look now at Jerry Thompson the coach walking back and forth he's our special teams coach second down 10 for the 33 you know I don't know what Ray Perkins said at halftime last week he got some results a he? lot yeah and they said he squints the eyes like a gunslinger you listen to him when he yells too second and 10 Hart, good protection this is Anderson incomplete he's got to get on the ball just to be sure as Bud Wilkinson, I'm sure not too happy about that one. That's the play that earlier picked up big yardage. George Martin defending on the play. And Hart is having to unload to the safety valves all the time, which means the secondary for the Giants is covering his primary receivers extremely well. Of course, Bud's going to try to make the adjustments to help this team on the field out. Well, the Cardinals are in a tough situation. They wanted to win today because you know they play next week, Pittsburgh. One day at a time. I, I would take the chairman of the tight end and start getting him in my offense right away. Third down, 10 from the 33 yard line. Hart back, a flag on the play. Stepping up. He's going to run it to the 25, and he does a headlong dive, and he got the first down, and you don't see Jim Hart run very often. I'll tell you something, he did all right, didn't he? S somebody jumped a little bit early. George Martin might have made the premature move Boy, I haven't seen Jim Hart run any better than that uh, in a long time maybe ever <laughs> there's Martin now going down to the crowd trying to hide that's my offside McCoy. defense number 75 refuse first time all right here is the uh, oh we're not going to show the run we're going to show the run by Hart we should no, we're not going to show the run. That's, that's too bad, you know what? First down from the 21 yard line. Here it is. Fame and glory. Back to the live action now on a first down. Hart gives to Anderson. Anderson to the corner to the 15. Anderson to the 11 yard line. All he needs is one step outside. Terry Jackson, the cornerback, fills to make the tackle. And you know, he hits the tackler harder than the tackler hits him. Preseason, we saw him use the elbow. He doesn't use the elbow here, but watch him punish the tackler when he knows he has to take him hit on right there. Even Nelson gets up feeling his back a little bit. He took himself out on that play. Gonna catch a breather. As we have second and one now from the 12 yard line. Bud Wilkinson, his team got off bad footing last year, losing their first eight. They don't want that to happen again. Wayne Morris and Thomas Lott, number 26, six-round draft pick from Oklahoma in the backfield. Here's Hart, going to Dave Steve. Steve, and we have pass interference against Terry Jackson in the end zone, and that was quite obvious. Terry would have gone to the ground had it not been for the uniform that Steve was wearing. Watch Jackson now. Might see it here on this first replay. It's a corner pattern by the wide receiver. There is Terry just keeping himself up by holding on to the trousers. That'll be first and goal at the one. As, of course, when you commit the pass interference, the end zone. Pass interference. Defense, number 24 in the end zone. First down on the one-yard line. So they bring it out to the one. Jackson last year led the Giants in interceptions with seven out of San Diego State. As a rookie, which is unusual. And also very rare, right? <laughs> and that, and now the full house backfield. Brown, Lott, Morris, behind Hart. First and goal at the one. Tom, the oldest Brown, rather, trying to take it in. And he got in. Touchdown. Let's look at it from the ground level. The officials might have determined the Giants are not the reason that his forward motion stopped. Let's see if he runs into his own men. Uh, he got pretty close. Broke the pane of glass, that imaginary pane of glass. You can see the official there. With his hands outstretched and the defense always argues on the goal line no matter what so the Cardinals after being stunned early have gotten on the board Jim Hart moving that ball very effectively point after temp by Mike Wood is on the way the hole by Worley that was a little shaky on that play but it's good as we look again at the touchdown run by Theotis Brown the Cardinals trail it 
14 to 7. Honey, is this homeowner's insurance high? I don't know. Think it's too much? How would I know? Compare with Allstate. Compare? compare? Bring in your policy and compare rates. If you have a good deal, we'll tell you. But for many, chances are we've got a better deal. We've got a better deal. Allstate might save you some money, but you'll never know until you bring in your policy and compare. Oh, that's a good deal. <laughs> when you want to save on homeowner's insurance, yeah. <laughs> Allstate wants to help. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. To drive through dirt and dust, hey! good filters are a must. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Trust those filters by AC. Sure glad I installed new AC air and oil filters before we get into this mess. I bet AC helps protect those babies too, huh, Dad? If they're smart. Good George! Oh. So when you gotta go, we're the name to know. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Trust those filters by AC. Thanks, AC. Trust those filters by AC. Well, we've got some serious business on the field right now. Dan Deardorff, who the last three years has been voted the offensive lineman of the year, is down after that touchdown run by Theotis Brown and then the point after. Nine years out of Michigan, an All-American, an All-Pro, and just sort of the guy that symbolized the, uh, the uh, pardon me, the St. Louis offensive feeling of that our offensive lines are maybe the best in football. Now, they were fooling around with his left leg a little bit, and they're waiting for a stretcher. Boy, boy, you hate to see that. And there's the rest of that offensive line. Wartman, Terry Steve, Bob Young, Al Chandler. You can see how they feel about it. He is the leader of that offensive line, five times an all-pro. And one thing the Cardinals don't have, Tom, is a lot of depth with that offensive line situation. They have quality, but not the depth. And the thing about a 290-pounder that has a knee injury, it's very hard to rehabilitate. You have to take the body weight down so low so that your hinge will carry. Now, here's the big rookie, Bostic, who has pretty good credentials coming in. He's going to have to grow up in a hurry. Well, he's a big guy, six foot three, 265, a third round pick out of Clemson, but you just don't replace a Dan Deardorff. I want to talk about something that we've been talking about all day the Project SOS. Bob Stenner has been out producing that. Where are they located? Out by Salt Lake City somewhere. Somewhere out on the Salt Flats, and they made 630 miles an hour on a one-run stretch this morning at about 8 o'clock in the morning when it was only 76 degrees. Now, that is not the speed of sound. This morning it was probably somewhere around 700 mph, but they think they can do it. They only used 50% of their power today, and they did 638.637 out of the Bonneville Salt, Salt Flats. That's Stan Barrett, who's driving the car. It's Hal Needham's car. The one-way speed record. Is that moving? Yeah, right now, I am worried about the big man that's down on the field. Guy takes, uh, it really hurts. You know, if you see a guy like this, you don't want anybody to get hurt, but maybe the premier offensive lineman. And Boy, I tell you, this game of football, we've had a lot of injuries this year, Tom. Oh, but I saw this fellow play when they had broken his jaw, and they were wired the jaw shut. He went down to like 265 and was still playing superb offensive right tackle. Uh, if he could walk off, Deardorff would have walked off under his own power. That's the reason that I'm concerned. He can't make a move right now. The big fella needs help for maybe the first time. Huh? Very articulate man out of Michigan. Does a lot of radio shows in the St. Louis area. And uh, doesn't look good right now. As you look at Lee Nelson, you know, you have guys on your ball club that just take over and lead, and this is one of them right now. He did it by example as well as off the field. That says it. And Deardorff on that play, and it must have been the point after, Tom, when it was kicked that it happened, which is even more unusual. You could figure on a running play or, or a pulling situation you might get hurt. Well, not really. Sometimes in a position where you can't move because it's a kick formation, you have nowhere to go to make the contact on your own ground, so to speak. You have to take it the way it falls, and sometimes it comes from a different angle and you're ready for it. Here's a guy, Bud Wilkinson, that so close to this team, every one of them respect him greatly, and I know what he's going through right now. He's you know, some prayers right now for Dan and they're going to take this big 288 pounder out of there. Joe Bostic will come in to play that right offensive tackle spot. 
Let's look at some scores now throughout the league. Uh, Chicago now on the board against Minnesota. It's a Thomas field goal, huh? 34 yarder by Bobby Thomas. Listen to the crowd. Listen to this hand here in New York, in New Jersey, for the offensive tackle of the St. Louis Cardinals, Mr. Deardorff. Dr. Garfinkel, Dr. El Sasser there along with the trainers bringing him off the field. It takes quite a few to carry the big fella off. He's at least 290 right now. You know, uh, in that New Orleans game, Tom, the Saints leading six to nothing, believe it or not, Tony Galbraith has just kicked another field goal. He may have to retire from running back. Charlie Davis, number 76, he was spelled in the first game of last year, the knee injury. Well, the toughest flight in the world is flying back to your hometown for an operation after a game. There he is. All right, big fella, make a move. And here we go, the kickoff. It's picked up short by Frank Marion of the Giants, and Marion brings it out to the 38-yard line. And there's Deardorff. James Elsasser, the doctor, looking at the left leg. The human knee is... I don't think the good Lord meant us to play football with it, you know, really. Pretty tough to keep it together. So from the 38-yard line, the Giants will have it. 13.01 to go before halftime. And at halftime, the NFL today, Brent, Jade, and Herb will update us on what's happening throughout the NFL. Go for Sergeant. With his team leading 14 to 7 on first down. And I don't know who that's to. Ken Stone's the closest to it. The tight end up the middle, Gary Shirk, I guess, is the intended receiver. I feel a sudden shift in the ball game. St. Louis's defense that time came off the ball. Maybe it's the fact that their big leader, Deardorff, is hurt. But Pollard that time put a big rush on Pasarczyk. Second down, 10. It's interesting. Sometimes a team will just take the wind out of their sails. Other times it'll fire you up. Giants got to be very careful right now. They're going to have to test the water before they put their foot in. From the 38-yard line, second and 10. Sarchik to throw again. He's been busy. He's got pressure on him. A flag on the play. And oh, is he hit at the 30? It's picked up. The race is on. This is Mark Arneson. Mark Arneson taking it in for the touchdown. Now we're going to see if it was the quarterback that was blown dead because they grabbed him early. I thought it was a legitimate fumble. Might have been holding. There's a flag, but the flag is against New York. That's going to be a touchdown. Boy, Arneson flew with it. The linebacker really moved. 31-yard touchdown by Arneson. I told you they were coming off the ball with a new feeling. It looks like they have the uh, New Jersey air just about the way they want it. The Cardinals are really after Pasarczyk, and that's a live ball. Hello there, touchdown. You know, this guy, Arneson, has picked up 17 fumbles in his career. That's a big one there. 31-yard touchdown run. It was Bob Pollard that separated the ball from Pasarczyk. Mike Woods, point after attempt, and just like that, it's all tied up. 14 all. We'll be back in a moment. New game, new game. When you're a lifeguard, you practice all you can. Because saving a few seconds may save a few lives. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. 